Hey guys, and welcome to Just the Tip. All right, so in this little web series, I'm gonna start doing a lot more often. We're gonna talk about tips that I can give you guys that are you know anywhere within music industry, especially with what I do, so music education, guitar playing, uh, or production, which is gonna be on today's episode. So I wouldn't say that I'm a professional producer per se. Um, I've always done it kind of on my own with my own music and any lesson material. I haven't really mixed or done anyone else's music. So I'm mostly going off of uh, the things I've learned over the past 10 years. And I have a pretty limited studio. I'm um, just kind of basic what you'd call maybe a bedroom studio. I also want to say in the future these will be better audio quality. I do have a lapel mic and I have a condenser mic both of which are kind of out of commission right now. The lapel mic is, needs a battery and the uh, condenser mic is not here. So that sucks. So Canon audio is not so bad, so I guess we'll have to bear with it on this time. So today, what we're gonna talk about is we're gonna talk about adding in drums, uh, fake drums, or using drum samples from something like Superior Drummer onto our song. Specifically, we're gonna talk about ghost notes, the dynamics of each hit and how important that is. We're gonna bust into the screen here and talk a little bit about what ghost notes are and we're gonna talk about how to use them easily, an easy way to use them. So here we go. So here's my tune. It's not completely mixed, so bear with me on that. Uh, it's just kind of getting finished up in the drums and I'm just kind of messing around with what, what I, what I want to hear so I thought I'd share this with you guys because um, I'm kind of in the middle of my writing session here. So um, here's the little excerpt, 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 excerpt. T today, Junior! Here's a little part of the song that I've been working on. So that's my little part I'm messing with. I know it's not overly complicated, but it's meant for a solo section. So um, you're not even gonna be paying attention to the background. But I did wanna add some ghost notes to kind of give it kind of a better groove and more of a natural drum feel because with the way the other drums kind of sound and the way that, that I've played drums in the past, just sitting on those grooves like that um, can maybe be a little boring and, and it, I don't think it grooves as much. So what I'm doing is I'm adding some ghost notes. Ghost notes are, if you don't know, are uh, these light hits on the drums, especially on the snare is where we're using them here. So they're between the main snare hits. So I should say that this song is in 12-8 or you can see it as being in 4-4 with triplets. So our pulse is like a 1 and a 2 and a 3 and a 4 and a 1 and a 2 and a 3 and a 4 and a Okay, so that's important to know. The next thing is knowing where that strong snare hit is going to be, which is on three. One and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a... And I could do that the whole song if I wanted to, or this whole section if I wanted to, but uh, to break it up I'm throwing in, or not to break it up, but to give it a better feel, which I think gives it a better feel, is putting some ghost notes in there. So um, the other thing I want to point out is knowing how to play drums or having some drum lessons or researching how the drums work is extremely important if you're not a drummer like myself. I've played for years, but I don't consider myself a drummer per se. I don't own a drum set, but I do play. So it helps a lot. It helps a dramatic help. So anyway, so how do I add in these ghost notes? So first off, I really do need to um, get my snare hits in place first thing, my strong snare hits. So I'm getting those snare hits on three first. You can see back here that I haven't added the ghost notes yet. So here, Okay, then you can see I added the ghost notes a little bit later. So those ghost notes, there is a science to them. They're not just randomly placed. So I'm thinking about what a drummer is doing with, with their hands. Usually, a lot of drummers are gonna be kind of keeping a subdivision on every kind of limb, really. So um, what that means is that they might be going a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a, within their hands, maybe on the crash or whatever they're using. They might go that route. They also might do um, some sort of different sticking. So maybe in this case, if you have right, left, left, 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 then you could imagine that those could be maybe where our ghost notes are. The way I'm viewing it here is I'm thinking uh, maybe a drummer is, or myself is keeping this light right, left, left, right, left, left, right, left, left, right, left, left, right? That keeps that pulse one and because uh, we have 
right, left, left, three beats, one and a two and a three and a four and a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So when I do that, I have now a place or, or places for those ghost notes to go. So <clears throat> one of the easiest places to put them is before the strong snare hit on three. So I'm thinking one and a two and a three is a good spot. And you can see that here. So there's one spot where you might see it happen. And then another spot was right at the end of that, kind of within that right, left, left, right, left, left pocket. So you can see that I had it on the, the last two subdivisions before my strong hit. So it was two and a three. And and those those are really light hits. They're kind of little bounces off the snare. So there's that. The next thing is the velocity. You obviously don't want those to be as high as the actual snare. So we're gonna come over and look at the velocities that I have. So you can see down here that I have a lower velocity, there's my big snare hit, there's my, my ghost note, and so I can kind of put that wherever. The hard part is I do have some kick drums going, so I need to have it a little bit louder than I probably usually would to get that sound. So you can hear, if I, if I lower that too much, it's going to be inaudible. If I raise it too much, it's going to sound too loud, it's not going to sound like a ghost note, it's going to sound really fake. It's gonna sound like a fill, basically, or like a little double hit. So I guess those are the basics of what I, how I use ghost notes. Um, really easy way to go about it. If you have any questions, please leave in the comments. I know I didn't cover a lot about velocity, but I do have other tips about um, drum fills and things like that as far as how much to mess with velocities on those. But yeah. If you have any questions or you want me to cover anything, whether it's production, uh, teaching styles, or how to teach guitar lessons, or um, different playing questions within guitar, um, leave those in the comment, and then please make sure to subscribe, and um, hopefully you'll see me next time. Thanks.